Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. shows before. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, Myrick O'Connell, there were a whole bunch of us. There were 60 lawyers. I'm the lawyer that does elder law. I do a lot of seminars uh, here and in other communities, but the purpose of this presentation or these presentations is to expand on the things we talk about in the seminars and really get you to meet the people that you need to know as a senior. Uh, the people from different kinds of, of organizations, uh, that where where you just need to know these folks, and one of the people you need to know is my friend Jazz Civitan. And Jazz, thank you very much for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, Jazz, you are at the Carriage House, yes. which is this wonderful assisted living facility here in Wayland. That's where we are today, right? Yes. Um, and so I want to talk about the Carriage House and ca talk about who's there, why you might want to be there, pluses and minuses. But first, can you just tell folks a little bit about you? Tell, sure. tell me about you. Sure. Why, sure. Do, why are you there? <laughs> I, because I love it. Because you, oh, <laughs> come on out. Okay. Really, yeah, okay. it, I will give you the play-by-play. -play. I actually yeah. started right out of school. I yeah. went to school for psychology. Yeah. And my sister was- My major also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So my sister was actually an activity director. Yeah. And to be quite honest with you, I thought I was going to work with kids in my future. And lo and behold, my sister said, you know, Jazz, I think you'd be really good at this. And my sister was actually my boss to start right out of college. And so she kind of showed me the ropes. Yeah. Um, and then both of us moved to a new, a new community. And again, the two of us, the dynamic duo, we called ourselves. You yes, we did. Yeah. And I was given a chance that at, this, at that point, I didn't know where I would end up with this, yeah. but I was actually running the um, Alzheimer's and Dementia Memory Care floor there. I see. And, and was that, this at another assisted living facility? Yes, I see. yes. I see. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I couldn't believe that it just took the experience of, of someone taking a chance with me for me to realize, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. This is my niche. This is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And there's, what there's a, a great... There's an old Buddhist expression, leap and the net will appear. Sometimes yes. you just have to kind of do it, you know, and then it just kind of shows up for you. It right? was so a, amazing, amazing experience. And um, to wake up every day and yeah. loving what you do, I mean, that's yeah. what people look to do and look to find in their lives. And I have it at such a young age. And that's, so that's a wonderful thing. I tell yes. my kids that. I say, you know, what, what you want to do is the thing you love doing because then you're going to do fine because you want to do it, right? Exactly. Because it's, it's not work. So tell us a little bit about the Carriage House. What, sure. what is the Carriage House? When did it start? I know sure. it's fairly recent to, to Wayland. Absolutely. Wayland. So it actually, the whole building opened last February. Mm -hmm. And our program, the program that I run, the Vita program, yeah. our first resident moved in March 17th. So that was our official open on Avita. I see. And the see. official open on traditional was in February. I see. And Avita is? Avita is our memory care community. Within the and so t give us some quick numbers. So like how many how many folks are living in or how many uh, uh, apartments? Are these all sure. apartments? These are not common. Yes, these are apartments. all apartments. Yeah. And there's 62 apartments in total, and yeah. 29 of them are on the Vita and the Vita community. So talk to us about the rest. There's the 62 sure. minus 29, so there's about like 30, exactly. 30, 33 units yes. that that are in a, and these are all apartments. Yes, who lives there? So we have independent, assisted, and memory care within our carriage house community. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the numbers, it's 62 units in total. Yeah. And we're, we are, now it's independent, assisted, and memory care, so you have three in just one small community. And so, if I, so if I'm an independent person, yes. 
what what is what is that like? What am I? Why is, am I going? Independent is just as if you're having your own apartment. So you can have your own car. You can make your own food if you'd yeah. like. Whatever it is, why you want to come to yeah. Carriage House and be in the independent side? Oh, excuse me. You told me I'm going to make my own food, which means I've got my own kitchen. You yeah. do. You have your own stovetop. Yeah. full refrigerator, yeah. microwave. It also comes with three nutritional meals, breakfast, yeah. lunch, and supper. So and if there's I don't want to make my own meal. Right, you can keep your own things within your refrigerator and you sometimes people might just want cereal in the morning and right. you can have then the comfort of your own apartment. And so what is so important is, is say if you come to us and you're independent living, yeah. you have to take into consideration the other people that you're going to meet. Yeah. Just because maybe you're in your elder age doesn't mean to say that you can't meet your best friend. You can't meet new people within our community and really kind of start your life again, if you will. Yeah, although I would suppose, I know for many of the seniors that I talk to, one of the one of the hard, hardest parts for them, it, whether they are whether they are married or they are or oftentimes widowed, you know, they're widows or widowers, sure. is that they're in their home, they love their home, they've been their home forever, right? right? And they but and they really don't want to move their from their home, but the neighborhood around them has kind of changed over time because the Absolutely. people they knew in that neighborhood aren't there, so oftentimes they don't have the same. They're, they're, they're not knowing a lot of the folks that are around. Exactly, exactly. And you make a great point, and that's what we're seeing with a lot of our residents, that times are changing. Mm -hmm. Maybe their best friends within their neighborhood or fellow, you know, fellow people that they'd see every day, it changes. People are getting older, yep. and it's just a great experience. I can think of two residents on the top of my head right now that live on our traditional living, yep. and they've become best of friends. And that's the God honest truth. They are two friends that would have never have met unless they came to the carriage house. And now they're, you know, best of girlfriends. And so, so I gather that, that one of the things that, that, that you get when you're yes. there is that this isn't just, you're not just moving to an apartment complex. Of course. That there's, there, there, is, there are, so what is there that could cause folks to kind of get to know each other while sure. they're there. So there's daily programs. Yeah. There's a social program director on our traditional living community. Yeah. Uh, everyday programs, we go on trips. There's medical appointments that we will take you on two days out of the week. And if yeah. it doesn't, if it doesn't fall on the two days that we have the van offered, we'll make the arrangements for you to make mm -hmm. sure that you're at, that you're at your medical appointment. Yeah. We go on weekly shopping trips. That way you can completely stock your apartment if you kind of run out of those little incidentals. Oh, this is really just shopping, shopping. So exactly. Like food store. Certainly. Yeah, yeah drug store, stuff, basic stuff. Picking up your medications, whatever yeah. it is. And yeah. also that doesn't take under consideration the trips that we go on, whether it's just the MFA trip. or we're Museum going to. Art. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, they love that. Where was, I was yesterday, actually. Really? Seeing this incredible Japanese. It was amazing. This Hokusai, Hosei, terrific, but one of, one of our favorite places. One of, what I've realized that our community, they just want to learn, they, wanna, they want to grasp what's out there in the community. And so if it's the Boston Symphony Orchestra, yeah. uh, we've, been, we've done it all. So it's when we have a community so great that yeah. just wants to be part of our Wayland community or Boston or wherever it is, we can do that. So it sounds like because of this mix in population, you have a lot of folks that are very active. Yes. And that want to stay Absolutely. kind of really active. Absolutely. But I know, I know for myself, when I hear about we're going on a trip, I think about these big senior buses, you know? <laughs> yes. So how many people are typically going on your trip? Oh, we always have a full van. And, and, but how big is the van? It, it fits 12 people. 12 people. Yes. Okay. So a full, a, a big trip is like a 12 person trip. That's correct. It's not a 50 person No, trip. no, not at all. We want to keep the numbers low because we think that the residents would just have a better experience. And yeah. plus, if you think about it, we staff these trips as well to make sure that everyone is safe. If God forbid, if something were to happen, you need that staff member to assist any way that we can. Yeah. We've even we've even had so many people on a trip that our staff have followed with another vehicle <laughs> yeah. to give up that space so we we can you know have more residents attend these fun trips. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So so I can if I'm thinking that it might be appropriate for me to not continue in my house, I can go there. Absolutely. From your experience, who goes? Who who comes to the, to, to be in one of those independent units? Where are they coming from? 
They're coming from home. They They're are coming, coming from, from home. home, yes. And are most of them couples or are most of them single? Who, who's coming? It's interesting. If, by, if you were to look at numbers, most are single. Yeah. However, this community, they're have been, I would say, six, if not more, couples. Yeah. And it brings a different dynamic to the group, and it's a great dynamic. You're getting even more residents, technically speaking, right. within our community, and you just, it's more of a family feel, because you have yeah. two people still married, you know, yeah. however many years it's been, yeah. and it just adds a different dynamic. So, yes, I see a lot of couples, but mostly it, it is single people that are Sing. coming. Yes. Now, can you talk about food a little bit? Because I, I, you know, once again, you know, that's the kind of the, the that's the meat and well, the meat and potatoes. It's a bad example, <laughs> um, but it's like it's one of the reasons that you really not want to go. You, you say to yourself, "Oh my God, I'm going to be trapped in a bad restaurant. Mm -hmm. How bad, you know, forever? How bad can this be?" We can you just talk about food a little bit. I am so happy to talk about food. I am a foodie. I love food. Look like you're still in shape, though. Right? You're working. <laughs> I out, love right? to eat, yeah. so that is very important yeah. to me. And we'll get into more of the memory care field, but food to me is so important because the meals to me is a very important program. Yeah. And so the food is fantastic, and I know that just because I'll have I'll have the meals that the residents are eating because I want to know how good it tastes, and it's fantastic. Right. Chef Jason has been working with Carriage House from the beginning, yeah. and he does everything from scratch. The potato chips, the french fries, everything is eat fresh, eat local. That's what we believe in. Um, so he uses... Well, you're at Lee's Farm, right? You're behind the old exactly. vegetable Exactly. So right. he uses local farms and yeah. he it's just, it's delicious. And we would love for the community, if you're ever thinking about coming to Carriage House, and you, that's yeah. very important, you can come anytime and just have lunch with us. And we oh. encourage that. Oh. It, can can you can you come and like stay over? Is there some kind of program where you could say to yourself, eh, "This looks okay, but you know, I don't want to actually be there for yes. like a day or for a couple of days." Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We offer that on our traditional and Avita memory care program, I a see. respite stay. I see. So now, can you talk a little bit about? So these are folks we were talking about folks that are just completely independent. Yes. For whatever reason, they've decided home, whether it's too dangerous or it's just too isolating, or whatever that they're going to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. So what about folks who need a little more help? Sure. Talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. So our independent and assisted living mm -hmm. folks, they live together in our traditional community. So these aren't separate units. Right? That's correct. Okay. And so what we can offer for assisted living, and you might not know if someone needs assistance just by looking at them, but maybe they need help with their medications. Yeah. So our, and at no extra charge, our RCA's, resident care assistants, mm -hmm. will help with medication management. Mm -hmm. So they will administer the medication, put it in the resident's hand, just so they, you know, it, there isn't error. There isn't, oh, oh no, did I take my medication this morning? It's just to be consistent. So they'll actually come in at a designated time during the day and say, Yes, you know, whenever Mrs. the Jones, you know. Absolutely. Just as a reminder, whenever the medication time is. Um, furthermore, if a resident say needed just help within the within personal care. Yeah. So sometimes, let's be honest, in the shower can be really difficult for our elders, especially. So if you need a little extra assistance or just a hand just to get started in the morning, yeah. we can provide that. Um, and so that would be considered assisted living. Right. Or right. maybe an escort to meals or just a reminder for a program that's around the corner. So there's just a whole variety of things. In addition to, I would assume, basic things like, yes, we'll make the bed for you. Absolutely. You or there are some services that can be that can be yes. provided. So it's it's around so it really just could be it could be anything. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. And 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 once again, about how many people now or how many of you of the folks in your community are in that kind of a living, a living situation? Most are, most are. I have a great group that is considered independent living, yeah. if you will, yeah. but most are assisted living. Um, and it just might be because they just need help with medication. Whatever it is, yeah. like I said, you can't, you wouldn't be able to tell if someone needed extra help just by looking at the person. Right. They just might need a little extra help physically. So can we talk a little bit about the, what I always think of as the designated daughter? For so many of these folks, for so many of my clients, there's somebody, often a child, usually a girl, mm -hmm. who has been kind of helping out, even while the folks are still been at home, right? Mm -hmm. um, who are actually oftentimes the people who finally 
can convince mom or dad, you know, it's been a great house, you know, and I, I loved my bedroom and it's still there, but you know, maybe it's time, right? So when that person comes to you and is living in your community, do you still have, do you have some communications with those children, obviously assuming that you're getting the permission of the adult because they, they have their own privacy. Can, can you just talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Our families are very much part of our residents' day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. Our doors are always open. We want our families to be part of our life at Carriage House, our programs. But as far as communications with the family, mm -hmm. it's... Oh, by the way, can they actually stay over? Do the children ever actually just stay they over? Do. They do. They okay. do. And... I didn't mean to get... No, that's okay. Was, yeah. A few occasions, because some family members are maybe out of state. Yeah. So yes, we have accommodated those family members to stay with their family here at Carriage I House. I see. So we're in very much contact with the families. If it's something that maybe we're concerned with, mm -hmm. we'll give them a call. Um, maybe we just want to let them know that they've had a great day. So we correspond via the phone or email. Email is really important because I can send a quick email to say, hey, mom's doing great. Right. You know, just, Medi just took letting her you know. Everything's fine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's really, this is a difficult experience for the families because it is letting go. Maybe that loved one was caring for mom at home um, and that bond is so strong and we want, we want the daughter or whoever was caregiving for their loved one to know that they're safe, their loved one is okay, and people need those checkpoints. People need to check in and know, okay, I might not be at carriage house physically, but I know that mom's doing okay. Because you think about it all the time. Exactly. Of it's like it's your own parents. You know, Absolutely. You're thinking about it all the time. And we encourage families to contact us directly mm -hmm. and either speak with the nurse that's on staff, whatever it is, if they just want to check in. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely okay to call at any time to say, hey, I just want to check in on mom. I want to check in on my dad, whatever it is. Now, is there a nurse, a nurse on staff most hours? Yes. There's a nurse on staff from 8 in the morning yeah. till 8 o'clock at night. Oh, that's great. And that's then great. from 8 o'clock at night to 8 in the morning, there is a nurse on call. I see. So if there's trouble, you can deal with it. Absolutely. So now let's talk about the folks who, who now need more, specifically because they're getting forgetful. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I always tell people um, when I talk about my clients, my clients either are worried about Alzheimer's or they have Alzheimer's or they've got a loved one who has Alzheimer's. Yes. That's who they're people, and, and, they're, and they're going through this whole trauma of all about that, right? Yes. So suppose I'm one of those folks mm -hmm. and I am slipping. I'm not you know, remembering things as well. Mm -hmm. I'm still physically able to get around and stuff, sure. but I could easily get lost, mm. right? Can you tell me about those folks? And I guess, once again, I always, I always think about this. My mother died in a nursing home. My older mm. brother has an has a early stage diagnosis now. He's like 78 years old. I can see it coming. So I want to have places like this where sure. I know that I could live even though I'm really forgetful and still have a life where I feel like I'm a meaningful person and like a happy person. So can you talk about, and I know it, it, as it happens, you're the director of the memory care community, yes. so I know you're excited about this. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. I personally... Why should I want to live there? And by the way, sure. full disclosure, one of my cousins does. Right, lives yes. in, in your facility, yes. which is one of the reasons I And I didn't it. even know they were yeah, your cousins. Yeah. So um, I run the Vita Memory Care Program. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can probably see from my smile, I love what I do and I love the program. And yes, we want our residents to feel that they have a place, that mm -hmm. place where they can call home and a place that they're comfortable being themselves. Because let's be honest, this disease process, it's, it's not a good disease, not as good. we all know. And our residents know that, you know, something's wrong with me, something's off. They need that supportive environment. And that's what we can provide it on Avita. So what's great about our community is that we are on the, we are on the smaller end. Yeah. So when it comes to how, programs. How many, how many of, of, your, of the, the, your, your apartments are devoted to the memory care? 29 folks? apartments. 29. Yes. Okay. And so because we're overall a small community at Carriage mm -hmm. House, when it comes to programs, a lot of people from what I hear is they get a little nervous that mom or dad will just be on Avita and not be able to take advantage of our beautiful oh, community. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. And they can. And that's what I like to tell people because it's the God honest truth that if we have a program or if I want to bring a resident to the cafe to get some coffee, we do that. We have enough staffing in place where we can provide that. 
Yeah. So if there's a yeah. special music program, it's for the whole community, not just traditional or Vita, because we are one. And that's what we want to put off to our community. That is, we, we work together. And can you talk to, me, talk to me a little bit about the kind of training that your folks have that really would allow them to, I always say this term, learning how to speak Alzheimer's. I remember sure. reading that book, right? Mm -hmm. By the woman who actually lives around here, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Can you just talk about that a little bit? Because I think, and, 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 and perhaps even talk to the ways in which folks who are at home right now or whose parent or loved one is at home right now can be treating them mm -hmm. in a way that does maximize that sense of self-worth and that sense of, you know, kind of having a positive day, sure. even though you know something's wrong, Absolutely. even though you're tempted to feel really embarrassed about it. Can you just talk about sure. that? Sure. So a little bit about the training piece mm -hmm. is I actually provide all the trainings for our staff. Mm -hmm. And I was trained through trained through the Alzheimer's Association. Mm -hmm. So that I trained... The habilitation? Yes. Is that right? I was getting to that. Okay. Yes. So Sorry. That's Didn't okay. That no, right. that's okay. Yeah. So I, every single person, every single staff member within mm -hmm. our care trust community is, is trained on Alzheimer's um, and formally all dementias. Mm -hmm. And that's through me. And that is an all day training. Mm -hmm. We also go one step further is we provide what's called golden rule training. Mm -hmm. So as we all know, the golden rule, do unto others as others would do to you. It's an additional training to understand that the actions that we see our residents do, let's say for instance wandering, that's mm -hmm. common within this disease process. We now want to focus on that there is a reason why that specific resident is wandering. What's the triggers? We want What's to figure it out. We want to know what is going on with that specific person where maybe they feel a little anxious or maybe they're just looking for the kitchen. Whatever it is, we want to figure that out. And also, our staff, do, they do continual trainings mm -hmm. every single month. So I provide all the training, so trust me, everyone is trained Everybody perfectly. Is trained. <laughs> um, and I suppose that's a real, that's a real special gift. It, it must be challenging to be hiring there, too, because I would yes. think, well, there's, there's training, but then there's also having, a, having people like you who just intuitively right. kind of get really wanting to be where that person is, right. even though that person has a memory problem. Exactly. Our staff that specifically work on the Vita community, yeah. they have a love for it. They have the same love that I have that I hope that I can, that I'm showing you. They have it in them too. It takes yeah. a special person with a special heart to be able to provide care and compassion to our residents with memory care. Um, to answer and, and, your... And do those t tend to be folks who have been with you for a long time or who have had background in this yes, kind of work? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and to answer your question, yeah. how to bring it home, yeah. what, can, what can caregivers do at home that where you would have a positive experience with your loved one that might have Alzheimer's or another form of dementia yeah. is the habilitation therapy that you had mentioned. Basically, what I run on the VITA program, what you can do at home mm -hmm. is that every single ability that, let's take for instance, washing the dishes, sweeping the floor, doing the laundry, whatever it is, those daily tasks, yeah. You want to practice those. If you practice those day, those abilities every single day, whatever it is, the the it will you the resident will lose that ability a lot slower. If you're not practicing them, if the resident at home or on a vita isn't practicing those everyday things that you would normally do at your home, they might lose that a little quicker. Yep. So and I you suppose actually, there's such a temptation if you're a caregiver and don't know that right. to just start doing it for them. Exactly because we want to fix, we're caregivers, we sure. want to fix, we want to make them feel, the resonant hand feel like, oh, don't worry, I can do it, when in fact, they're losing that ability a lot faster. So how, how amazing is it that we have the power to slow this process down in the sense of abilities right. and pra just practicing our everyday abilities, gardening, you know, doing the dishes, setting the tables, whatever it is. And I suppose if you're a caregiver at home, those are all things that you really want to practice. Of course. If you don't have all of those caregivers at home, yes. what a wonderful thing to be in a neighborhood where the folks that are around you are doing that. Absolutely. Right? You're just really, really good. You're just really, you <laughs> Thank know, you. As, as what you do is just really quite something. So Thank anyway, you. enough of this. Thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. I hope that this has been educational for you in terms of helping you understand the possibilities for assisted living, whether whether or not 
you think assisted living is appropriate for you now or in the future, you should check them out. You should go to their place, you could go to carriage, you should go to others, because it may be that in the long run or at some point in your life, that's the right answer for you. So thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Virtual and Briefs. Thank you very much.